If you've been anywhere around South Florida lately, you'll notice that no matter where you go, there are these restaurants popping up that only sell plant-based foods. And if you haven't met one yet, you're probably getting really close to meeting somebody who considers themselves a vegan. And what the heck is a vegan? And can you actually live a life that way? And maybe you shouldn't get too close because it might be contagious. I'm Dr. Jason Alvian, and you're listening to Structurally Sound. I want to welcome our guest today, Chloe Hill. She is definitely an entrepreneur out there, young person in the community, and she's got a lot of stuff going on. Welcome, Chloe. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> this is exciting, isn't it, with what you've got going on lately? There's so much going on. This is actually really good timing. <laughs> <laughs> so now from what I've seen is you're responsible for four locations in South Florida and three of those locations um, have kind of a little feel to it where it's based off of kava and kratom. Is this correct? Yes, that is correct. You could call it a kava bar, I guess, but yeah. it doesn't even really define what we are. No, well, exactly. So I, I mean, I've heard of kava bars and I have to be honest, the first time I ever went to one was uh, one of your places and I'd never had experience before that. And I'm learning that a lot of people have no idea what kava is or what kratom is. Um, but first, let's mm -hmm. tell a little bit about you. Who is Chloe? <laughs> so um, my background is actually in music therapy. I worked in hospice for a little bit. And then we were opening the Kava Bar Pause. And I ended up becoming so invested in it, putting so much time and effort. I was basically working two full-time jobs. And that's when the whole kind of entrepreneur lifestyle really became apparent to me that that was for me, not really the nine to five. So I ended up leaving music therapy. I say I'm retired. <laughs> and, <laughs> and now pause is just basically my whole life. And I love animals. I am vegan. And I'm just, you know, trying my best every day. That's basically, <laughs> that's I, I love hearing the, that word retire because for, for those of you that are listening right now, um, uh, if you haven't met Chloe, she looks like she's about 22 or 23 years old and she's already retired from one job. <laughs> I'm 26. Yeah, so, well, Thank heck, you. I mean, three years off and, and you've already hit a retirement. <laughs> that is uh, a feat that I think a lot of people <laughs> would like to be. So 26 years old. You've got four different locations going on. Uh, so let's talk about the uh, the first uh, locations that you opened up. You opened up Kava Kratom Bar. What is Kava? Let's talk about that first. So Kava is actually the root of a pepper plant. It's called the Kava Kava plant. And it's native to the South Pacific Islands. Its birthplace is actually Vanuatu, which is a bunch of islands in South Pacific. And it's been used for thousands of years for a bunch of different purposes such as ceremonial religious social recreational and it is a psychoactive plant but it's really hard to compare it to anything I think that's why people have such a hard time understanding what the appeal is until they've experienced for themselves what the effects are and it's definitely not for everybody but a lot of our customers I've noticed myself included seem to use it as an alternative for alcohol because you still get all the benefits of being at a bar, like hanging out with your friends, unwinding at the end of the day, relaxing, feeling good, talking more, but there's no, none of the downfalls. You don't get a hangover. You don't, your judgment isn't impaired, which is really nice. You would never do or say something on Kava that you wouldn't normally do or say. <laughs> so <laughs> does this mean you can get in the car and drive? So Technically, you can have enough kava that it will affect your motor skills and you should not drive, but not in the same way that alcohol does. Um, it's kind of a gray area, but I definitely wouldn't recommend drinking a bunch of kava and driving. But if you have a couple of shells, <laughs> I've driven home, yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, now, now I mean, you just compared it to alcohol. Now, if somebody goes and has two or three or four drinks of alcohol, uh, they're definitely beyond the legal limit for uh for driving. And if you've had two beers, three beers, something along those lines, you really shouldn't be getting behind the wheel because if you 
hurt somebody or anything like that. And then also um, illegal. What, how would you compare Kava? Right. How many drinks could you possibly have before you would say, eh, it's not a good idea for you? So you do need to be 18 or older to purchase or consume Kava or Kratom, which is another one of our really popular drinks. And, you know, in the islands, they, they drink it all the time. But <laughs> for here, there's really no, um, there's no test. You know, it's not like you can get a breathalyzer and see how how much kava you've had. So it really is a personal responsibility. Okay, so you got this personal responsibility. Um, kids that are are recent adults and they're eighteen have a place that they can go and get the bar atmosphere um, in your places without actually going to a bar and and getting on alcohol. So, now, with you saying this gives um, effects. What are some of the effects you might be able to get from, let's talk about kava first. What does a person feel? I know you said it's hard to describe, but it, you've been around it long enough. I think you might be able to describe it the best out of anybody. Yeah. So the first thing that happens when you drink kava is your mouth will get a little numb and that's totally normal. <laughs> And then that doesn't really last long, but the effects are really physiological and psychological relaxation. So if you're stressed out, it will definitely take you down a few notches. It's also been shown in some studies, preliminary studies, to be just as effective, if not more effective than anti-anxiety medication, which is really fascinating. And I really hope that they continue doing these studies on kava because I think it can help a lot of people and so many people just don't know about it or aren't in a position where they have the opportunity to try it and really give it a chance. Um, it's also been said to help with insomnia. And for me personally, I like to drink it at night after I'm done with everything to kind of unwind and relax. Um, it's actually even been shown to, it's been suggested that may help break the cycle of addiction in the brain by stopping cravings for certain things, which is really, oh, really wow. interesting. And I know it's helped a lot of people. Yeah. Wow. That's actually really good. So somebody that would be like, say, addicted to opioids or along those lines, this could really help bring them out of that? Yeah, that's what the study suggested. I, I hope that they will do more research into it. Okay. Well, what about you? You ever think about getting into some of the research with this or you're pretty much happy having the, things the way they are? <laughs> Maybe if I can get some other people to run the businesses more day to day, then maybe, I, maybe I would try to do something like that. Yeah, right maybe, you could, maybe you could even like apply for a grant or something like that to help um, do some studies and bring uh, people in that way. Uh, uh, maybe even bring like Kava to, some of, to some of the... Uh, the, the local rehab centers and do that. See if something, I mean, th there's so many things out there that you're, that you're pointing out with this, that it seems like something that would be good. So there are some kava bars that people might say that they kind of prey on people in recovery by just, you know, trying to get the strongest drinks or the craziest extracts. And I do think there is a place for those products, but definitely not for people who maybe have a, an addictive personality or a history of substance abuse, that's something that they do need to be careful with. Um, everyone is different. And like I said, you do need to be an adult to consume it. And there is a personal responsibility there to know yourself and to you know, consume things responsibly. And that's one of our biggest goals is to kind of redefine this entire industry because it kind of does have a negative connotation in some circles. Okay. And I've definitely experienced that myself. Yeah. No, we you know we just went over um, kava. What about kratom? What there's a difference? Obviously, the name, so there must be a difference. So what what is it? So they are actually completely different plants. Kratom is native to Southeast Asia. It's actually related to the coffee plant. They're kind of like cousins. And so kava is relaxing, and kratom is stimulating. Okay. And kratom is actually. Yes, kratom is actually the more controversial of the two, I guess you could say, <laughs> because it does work as a part as a partial agonist to the mu opioid receptor. It doesn't cause um, things like respiratory depression or other side effects of classic opioids. It's, it's not an opioid, but it does work on the same receptors, it doesn't completely bind to them. And it can be habit forming, similar to coffee. It's also really great for pain relief. It's amazing to enhance your mood. It gives you energy. 
it's helped me so much. I have hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, which is like a, an autoimmune disease. And my whole entire life, I was diagnosed when I was six and I was just always so tired no matter what medication the doctors gave me I just never felt right and I just thought that that was a normal way to live my life and when I found Kratom it definitely improved my quality of life my mom struggles with chronic pain it helped her so much with that a lot of our customers have chronic pain issues that Kratom they say is the only thing that helps them oh wow okay and and, and is that that's something that if uh, somebody has a, a few of those they should uh be careful with driving as well or so kratom actually it does not impair your motor skills at all if you drink too much of it you'll just get nauseous honestly okay and then, then you're not going to want to drive because you feel yeah. sick but okay so having too much how did you personally discover kava kratom how did this come about well i actually owe that to my my little brother dustin he, he started um one of his friends invited him to a local kava bar and he started going there. He he really liked it. And he wanted my mom and I to try it. So when he suggested that we go, we pull up to the place and my mom and I are like, um, we're not comfortable going into <laughs> here. Like, this doesn't look like a nice place. <laughs> you know, you have tinted out windows and people like chain smoking out front. And then I was just not we were nervous to walk inside. We're like, what yeah. is this? And we were nervous that he was even drinking this stuff because we'd never heard of it before. And eventually he would bring drinks out for us. So we tried it and we did a lot of research. My stepdad is a physician. So my mom had him read some different studies and you know, try and figure out the science behind it to see if it was actually a safe thing for my 18 year old brother to be doing. And we decided that it was okay. And my mom and I really liked it. And then we just started thinking after we had been drinking it for maybe about a year, how many people are missing out on this just because it's not accessible to them because they would, like us, they wouldn't ever think to walk into a place like that and, tr and try Kava or Kratom. So where do, where do you get your, your supply from? I mean, not, you don't have to get specific on that, but obviously you said the, the plants come from the other side of the world. Are you getting it from the other side of the world or are there special grow places here that you can make your own? We do get it shipped from out of the country. So our kava comes directly from Vanuatu. We have a really good relationship with our supplier over there. And he also is working with the parliament over in Vanuatu to make the conditions better for the farmers. And it's sad to say, but there is some corruption. Like it's definitely too much to get into for a 30 minute podcast, <laughs> but there are some, <laughs> some places have products that aren't as clean as ours or, you know, different parts of the plant that make the plant stronger, but less safe. And we get ours from a really good source. We lab test everything and it does get imported directly from overseas. Okay, good. So you're making sure it's safe for all your customers and you have a, a consistency there. Absolutely. Oh, that is cool. Yes, we always get it from the same place. Yeah. So now uh, we're going we're gonna to switch directions here for a moment. Um, you said you're a vegan. Uh, I know most people know what that yes. is, but Tell me what that is. What does it mean to you to do that? So being vegan to me is more than just being plant-based because I know that a lot of people will say they have a plant-based diet, but they'll still um, like buy products with leather or I feel like vegan has more of that, um, that connotation with like morals and beliefs versus just a diet. Okay. So being vegan is just not exploiting animals or using anything that comes from animals for food or clothing or anything really. Versus somebody that still will buy leather shoes, but they're going to eat plant-based. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And, uh, or, or people like whole food plant-based is, you know, super healthy, obviously. And like, just because I'm vegan doesn't mean I only eat vegetables and stuff. I still have pizza and pasta and <laughs> all that good stuff. You just make sure it's not made <laughs> with any animal products. So when you're doing the pizza, you're not doing cheese. Of course not. Not real cheese. Not real cheese. <laughs> Correct. Not dairy cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so I I've been to, um, three of your four places, because um, I live close to and work near all of them. Now, your, your newest one that 
is uh, in, in Deerfield Beach is a restaurant as well. Let's talk about that because yeah. that just opened and I've been there and had some of the food for your, your uh, kind of like grand opening party and uh, it, mm -hmm. the food was great. So there's nothing else to say, but it was amazing food. And whether you are vegan, plant-based or a meat eater, uh, it's still a great experience as far as food goes. Let's talk about this new restaurant. Well, thank you. First of all, I'm honored that you came <laughs> and that you support us and you liked everything. Uh, we, it, you know, it, it was a really scary thing because I've never even, I've never even worked at a restaurant, <laughs> let alone owned a restaurant. Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> because the kava bars are, it, it's so interesting. Like when, when I talk to people who are interested in opening a kava bar, there's really no resources. It's just kind of figure it out. Like there's all these weird gray areas, like what kind of food permit do we need? What kind of, what kind of licenses do you need? Because it's just not available because it's such a new kind of neat thing. But uh, with the restaurant, I had a little more guidance. I could do more research easily. And my boyfriend, his name is Keith Franco, AKA vegan snack daddy. <laughs> he's an amazing chef he's been vegan for like 15 years he actually helped me go vegan a little over two years ago and eventually we were able to convince my mom who's our partner to make all of our kava bars vegan so he was providing food like snacks grab and go stuff for kava bars and we saw how well of a fit it really was how well they complemented each other and how much our customers vegan or omnivore alike really enjoyed Keith's food and supporting and supporting him as well as us. So when we were driving, my mom was driving by and she saw a for rent sign at a restaurant and she called Keith and I, and she's like, you guys want to open a restaurant? <laughs> and we were like, okay. And that's really how <laughs> oh it my gosh. That's the story. We're crazy people. So now it's open. Tell us about, about the restaurant. What's an experience like for someone coming there? What are some of the foods that they can get? Let's, let's go down this list. Let's talk about the menu because everybody likes to eat. Okay. So Keith really wanted to make sure that we would have something for everyone, like people who may not be vegan and want those familiar items like a, like a cheeseburger or chicken wings. He wanted to make sure that we had things like that for people. Uh, that were veganized, obviously. And then also we needed some healthier options. So we have um, like Chloe's tofu main bowl, which is a quinoa and brown rice blend with a coconut peanut butter sauce and tofu and broccoli, Brussels sprouts, carrots, sweet potatoes. It's all really good. Um, we have a really unique menu and it's right now it's just a limited menu. We've only been open for one week, like you mentioned. So we're going to be adding a lot more. We definitely want to add a brunch as soon as we possibly can. Okay. Brunch sounds wonderful. I, I've, I've had a lot of Keith's food. Yeah, I'm food, really looking so forward to it. I actually, I, yeah, I've, I've <laughs> eaten a lot of his food, uh, especially at like the grab and go. It's just like so easy to get. And um, I don't think there's anything I have that I haven't had from there that I went, oh, I wouldn't do this again. Everything I'm like, oh yeah, really? let, me, let me get another one. So yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll stop there. I'll keep stuff here at the office and I'll, the grab and go stuff is, is wonderful. And it's always interesting to go. I can have a grab and go egg, sausage and cheese bagel and there's no animal product in it. And it's just, it tastes amazing. You, you would have no idea that you're eating something that didn't have the traditional ingredients on it. Right. And it's so funny to see how people are before they try his food, knowing it's vegan. Some people are a little off by that or they're like, does it taste good? And I'm like, <laughs> yes. And then they're asked, they're like, is anyone in here not vegan? Because I need to know if it tastes good. <laughs> and I'm like, just because I'm vegan doesn't mean I don't know if something tastes good. <laughs> and then all of our non-vegan customers are like, yeah, all of Keith's food is really good. And then they try it and they get hooked on it. And that just brings us so much joy. You know, our mission isn't to make make everyone be vegan or force everyone to be vegan but just to be more conscious of the food we're putting on our plates and sharing veganism with people and showing them that you can have amazing tasty delicious food that doesn't harm any animals in the process yeah let's see i, I so i've had that uh the the egg sandwich i've had the burger i've had the uh, buffalo chicken, chicken sandwich. sandwich i've had the bean burrito 
um, I, I don't even know what, what to call them. Uh, the, uh, the mushroom and potato wrapped up in dough, um, whatever that's called. Oh, that's actually from another, uh, another chef. Oh, okay. Called, she, her business is called Stone Age Bake Shop. Her name is Karina. She's another vegan chef. Well, I've had those. Um, what else have I I've gotten there? I guess I've had, um, it was also what the, about breakfast, the, cookies the breakfast the burrito. I've had the, the muffins. I've had the cookies. Um, Lexi, who he's had on this show, I've always got I've taken some stuff from her as well. That's always in there. And, and love her that. balls. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And um, to I've done the, tried the kratom, but I've never tried kava. I have not had that at all yet. Really? Yeah. So it's something I will well, have to come over and we'll yeah. have to bula. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I've been there as always. What do you have on tap? And obviously, your tap is the the kratom, but I've never done any of the kava drinks. Mm -hmm. But I guess it'll put me to sleep, huh? We'll have to change that. <laughs> Look, we're gonna change that. No, we'll, we'll just <laughs> we'll change that. So where are all your locations so anybody that's listening can find you? Oh, our first location, which is, I believe, the first one you ever came to, is in Delray Beach, pretty close to your office. It's uh, just north of Atlantic Avenue on Swinton in a cute little historic cottage. Uh, it's just north of the historic society where those buildings are. And then our second location, which is coming up on its one-year anniversary on the 26th, is in Deerfield Beach, right across from City Hall. And our restaurant is over the bridge in Deerfield on Deerfield Beach Island, located right next to Island Water Sports and across from Brews Room. And then we just opened another location on Lake Ave. We had our soft opening last weekend and we should be open by next week. And that is right on Lake Ave in the heart of downtown Lake Worth. Yeah, so I, I live, um really close to the one in Deerfield. So from my house to that one's probably about five minutes. And then my office to your one in Delray is even closer. No, oh, but the, the restaurant, you need one. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, the restaurant um, that does the full food service is in Deerfield on the Island. And the other three are the Cava Kratom. Cava yeah. Kratom. Cava Kratom. The restaurant is <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it too much. Mile away from <laughs> <laughs> now you're not going to be closing down the other one in Deerfield, are you? No, we're, we're going to keep both of them because so the, the restaurant is technically a completely different entity. I kind of call them like sister businesses. Mm -hmm. So all of our kava bars are called Paws and the restaurant is positively vegan. Now, for those of you that are listening, pause as in you're taking a break, like pausing a show. Because when I first heard about it and I knew some people were going there and they said that when you go into the one in Deerfield, I'm sorry, Delray Beach, you might go in there and there's dogs because people are bringing their dogs. And <laughs> so I thought it was P-A-W-S and I had no idea what Kava or Kratom was at the time. And I was like, okay, they're going there. It's where they get to go pet dogs and have a few drinks. Had no idea when I first oh. heard about it. Oh and I was like, oh, pauses, take a break, makes complete sense. And then positively vegan is the restaurant. Yes, that's correct. How did you come up with the name pause? What, what made you say this is it and it grabbed you? Well, my mom actually came up with it. And to be completely honest with you, at first, when she first said it, I was like, I don't know about that name. <laughs> but it definitely... <laughs> It definitely grew on us a lot. I think, you know, she really did a lot of meditating and soul searching and really asked herself what she wanted out of out of this place. And I think her answer was a place for people to take a break from the hustle and bustle of everyday life to press the pause button and to just be because I feel like in our society nowadays, it's almost celebrated to work your you know, so to overwork yourself until you're so exhausted and it's like a good thing and people aren't taking the time for themselves or doing that self-care that is so important. You know, we're having a mental health crisis and I think people really, it's been proven that people need a place to take a pause. So I think it's a very appropriate name and I'm well, glad we ended up going I, with it. I, I think it was kind of kind of ironic that you just said that people are working too much and your pause bars are open from 10 a.m. till 2 a.m. 16 hours for people to come and take a break. <laughs> but it does allow... And people say we should 
open earlier. <laughs> yeah. What about the people that want to get that 730 drink? Sometimes I'll pick stuff up at night and take it to go so I can have it for the next for morning. the next day. Yep. Yeah. Look, look. <laughs> Like you're like, I don't, we don't need to be open 24 We're working hours. At it. <laughs> There's some pava bars that are Island Root up in uh up in Royal Palm. They're open for 24 hours. They just stay open, huh? Just come on in. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went to I yeah. uh, about a month ago. I was at a continuing education for chiropractic up in Orlando. So searched a kava bar around the area and went to it. And it reminded me of your first experience to a kava bar. Like, I don't know if I should go inside here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people have that feeling at first. Yeah. I mean, once you go in, it's usually fine and the people are nice. Yeah. And, you know, it's great, but. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say the name of the place, but it was not nearly as nice. And the drink was not as good as the ones you make. <laughs> Well, we definitely take pride in, in our presentation and our, you know, the people that we hire and, and everything is something that we think about and consider. And it's very important to us, like the atmosphere and the quality of the drink, the consistency of it is very important to us. Well, I noticed when the, when you have them on tap, it comes up basically almost like has like a slight carbonation to it. Um, is that typical or is that kind of unique to to your business so there's a couple other kava bars that do put kratom tea on tap there's also a couple of pretty new companies that have been bottling kratom kind of like beer mm-hmm. and some bars are offering those brands and then there's also some people who do like nitro kratom on tap like nitro coffee oh mm-hmm. <laughs> which is pretty cool i mean everyone every place has their own unique twist on on the way that they're brewing their kratom or serving their kratom uh, it's it's all different, but some, like some people use powder, some people use crushed leaf. It's, it's the same thing, but just in a different form. And the, the brewing process is a little different. And I think that's what makes all the places so unique. So for all our listeners out there, how do they look you up on the internet? Um, if they want to do some of their own research and directions before they find their way into your location. So I believe if you Google Pause Kava Bar, our locations should come up. And if you are looking for more resources to learn more about Kratom in particular, the American Kratom Association is an amazing resource to have all this research, personal testimonies, everything that you could need about Kratom. And um, Kava, I don't really have any good resources for Kava off the top of my head. But a lot of Kava Bar employees are very knowledgeable. It's obviously a big part of our job is to explain it to people. So I always invite anyone who has any questions to come in firsthand and and just have a conversation with us. And we can we could talk about it for hours. Honestly, <laughs> we all are so passionate about it. And, and what about the restaurant? What's the website for the restaurant? They can look at the menu and atmosphere. So, yeah. So the restaurant is positivelyvegan.com spelled p-a-u-s-e-i-t-i-v-e-l-y vegan.com and our our full menu is on the website with pictures of all the dishes and forget what else i was going to (laughs) say that's all right uh so i'm going to just uh kind of close this out here for our listeners and make sure that they're able to find you uh you can google pause p a u s e kava and you can type in deerfield del rey and it will link you right to those bars and if you want to get a hold of the restaurant positively vegan you can google that as well and it's not positively positive so make sure you're spelling it pause as p-a-u-s-e and chloe it's always a pleasure and uh i think i'm gonna have to come over what restaurant are you at today you at the restaurant i'm in i'm not positively vegan yeah i I might have to swing by there later today and get that uh shot of kava yay i'll be here (laughs) all right thank (laughs) you so much and again i am dr jason alvian and you are listening to structurally sound The opinions expressed on this program are those of the guests and hosts and do not necessarily reflect those of WebmasterRadio.fm's management or sponsors. 
any rebroadcast or redistribution without authorized consent of webmasterradio.fm is prohibited.